Alright guys, here's the part number for the new pan gasket for the ALSA 1000. Um, this is a lifetime gasket, so the one that's on the truck is probably fine to reuse, but I figured if I'm going to start new, or start fresh with a new pan, new fluid, new filters, I might as well do a new gasket. I purchased it on Amazon, I forget what the price was, but I will tell you I got a killer deal <coughs> on the uh, Dexmark here, Mercon 3, um, on Amazon. This is literally half off. It's $13.95 or something per gallon on Amazon, and the local O'Reilly, I think it was like $25 or $26 a gallon. So I saved probably $80, bucks, $90 bucks by uh, getting it online. And uh, anyway, that's where you guys can take a look if you're going to be doing this yourself. Well, let's get started. transmission on these trucks you have to refill them through the uh, dipstick tube which is that black tube right there and you're going to kind of need a small funnel for that with the tube on it so you can get the fluid down the funnel or down the down the uh, dipstick tube okay guys we're looking at the pan here uh, the stock Allison pan and what you're going to need to remove that drain bolt is a 15 millimeter socket um, and then you're going to drain out about seven quarts, put the, clean off the drain plug, put that back in, refill it through the dipstick tube, drive it around a couple of miles, get everything mixed up, come back, drain it again, put the thing back in, remove the filter, put the new filter on with the new ma uh, magnet that came off of the old filter, refill it with seven quarts, heat it up, check capacity, or check the level when it's hot, and then you're good to go but in this case it's going to be a little different because we're putting the PPE pan on there so to start I'm going to get my drain pan and my socket out and we're going to get this thing drained and refilled and go for a drive Okay, it's cracked loose fluid is a little dark I don't know if it's too dark but it's a little dark it's got about 19,000 miles on it since the rebuild which means it had fresh clutches and steels in there and the fresh torque converter so there should be probably more wear on this fluid than normal because now the transmission should be broken in and I would imagine the fluid will be cleaner the next time I do this especially because there will be more of it Here's the drain bolt. Um, we're not going to reuse this on the new pan because the new PPE pan comes with its own magnetic drain bolt. I'm not seeing much of anything on here as far as metal goes. There might be s just a little, but both filters should have picked it up. So um, <clears throat> we'll let this drain out and then we'll put the thing back in there and refill it. So far, I've done a pretty good job of not making a mess. Which is nice because when I changed oil last time, as you saw, well, maybe you didn't see, I don't remember if I took a video, it was a mess because I tried to get the five gallon uh, deal under there and it wouldn't go under my cross member. And when it got down to the very last amount of oil, it just basically dripped all over the cross member and got all over the place. Whereas this 15 quart drain pan fits under here very nicely. Next step here is to go ahead and pull out the drain or the uh, transmission dipstick. Which you can 
can see high and low marks. There are high and low for both hot and cold. And I would imagine since we're putting cold fluid in, we're going to check it at cold. The truck should be running once you put the fluid in too to check the check the level properly. Okay, there we go. And then once again, Dex Merc, which is Merc 3, recommended for many GM Ford and Select Imports. What Mike told me is this has more bite um, than the Dexron 6, which is what they're using now. Um, here's the back. Take a look at that. So he prefers this because he thinks with Dextron Slick 6, there's some more slipping involved. Okay, there's four quarts, one gallon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up the truck to get the fluid moving around and then I'll check the level. go 44198 so what I did was I put seven miles on the transmission fluid that I just put in but I went one to six and six to one and I unlocked and I locked the torque converter with a tow haul mode and I went through them pretty aggressively so I'm pretty sure all the fluid is nice and mixed up um, at least good enough that I can go ahead and drain and refill and be confident that I got the majority of it out especially since I'm swapping out both filters it'll pretty much all be brand new and since we're doing it at 19,000 miles it's pretty much preventative maintenance anyway it doesn't need to be done but it's getting done so <clears throat> let's uh, slide back under the truck and drain her again okay got the fluid temp up to, to about 150 Transmission runs so cool it's really hard to get it hot. Alright, I'm just about done letting this drain. Because we're taking the pan off anyway, so if there's a little bit in the pan, I can dump it out after it's off. So go ahead and reinsert this uh, drain plug. Tighten it up a little bit. This transmission pan will be for sale if you guys want to buy it. Make you a good deal on it. Alright, so after 10 minutes of looking, I finally found the right size strap wrench. Let's see if we can get this sucker off of here. And again, Mike L from Englewood Transmission, who built the trans recommends the filter, the spin-on filter, every 15,000. The, uh, the fluid every 25 and the internal should just last the life of the transmission until you rebuild it. You shouldn't have to drop the pan unless you're rebuilding. Okay. 
there is a magnet on here so when you get it off make sure to take it off clean it and put it on your new filter looks like a donut okay it's loose and let it drain a little and then we'll get the rest of it off make sure you keep it level when you take it off you don't spill it all down your forearm go and then you can dump it in just like that make sure you also get this rubber o-ring off because the new filter comes with a new o-ring and there is the magnet I was talking about so there is some material on there not a ton maybe not abnormal I'm not sure go ahead and let the filter drain out and get it get a good look at the magnet hopefully you can see that there is quite a bit of gunk on there but again brand new clutches steels and torque converter and new bearings so with, with this is kinda like having a brand new transmission for 19,000 miles I'm sure it won't be as bad after and the the transmission was being relearned so with the new power it was making uh, it was slipping a little before it figured out how to shift now it's figured out how to shift and it's going to have new fluid and everything will be broken in already so there should probably be less uh, on here next time I do the filter at 15,000 more miles which will be right at about 60,000 for this truck so I'm going to go ahead and clean this and then get the new filter and throw it on there Just want to wipe it off with a paper towel. A clean paper towel, obviously. I get another one. And if you don't have your magnet, or you threw it away with an old filter, or it broke. You can order these separate from the filter. I think on Amazon or Merchant Automotive has them. They're only a few dollars. Obviously the dealer will carry them. Here's the new Allison filter, which that's the only thing you want to use is Allison. So I'm going to go ahead and slip the magnet over. And then I'll thread on once I get a little bit of fluid on my finger here lube up the gasket okay go ahead and thread that on be careful not to cross thread it once you get it started screw it on hand tight as hard as you can with your hand we go ahead and clean that off a little Flip your strap wrench over. Go ahead and tighten her back. And you just want to get it tight enough that you know it's on there. It's not coming off. It's not going to leak. <sighs> okay. 
All right, so to remove this pan, there are 12 13 millimeter bolts, and I'm using a small impact here with a 13 mil socket on it. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll have to bust them loose first. Let's see. And your new PPE pan comes with new hardware as well. I'm going to take the front ones out first. fluid in here but not too much okay. what I'm going to try and do here is bring this I think that's about centered. Well, that's a lot of fluid. gasket. Use the old sump filter. See if this just pops right out. It just press fit in there, I believe. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, man. Great. You guys ever wonder what the valve was? solenoids and all that. I'm not sure which ones do what, but <clears throat> there you go. Okay, you know what? I'm glad I read directions because these are the directions that come with the PPE deep pan that I'm installing. And you see it comes with the pan, the deep filter, the filter lock, and the hardware to reinstall it. And if you look in here, it shows you what you get. And then if you read the directions, here we go. Remove 
the pan, we did that. Remove the old gasket, we did that. Remove the old filter, we did that. I almost forgot about this. Remove the orange filter seal from the transmission housing. So I'll pry that out. Get the hardware ready. Put all the little washers on. Those are Allen heads. Insert the filter straight. Make sure it is straight. Place reusable gasket on pan. In this case, we're using a new gasket. One bolt through gasket and pan to hold it in place while installing. There's the torque sequence. I do have a, a small torque wrench that I can use. Uh, and then the filter lock. I'm not sure how the filter lock works, but I'll have to figure that out. If installing upside down, you might need to hold it in place. Okay. Yeah, because obviously the transmission is still on the truck. Okay, here's the pan out of the package, and here's the filter. You can see they've taped up all the hardware here. And I've got to go ahead and get that unpacked, but I wanted to show you the inside of this pan. You can see all of the baffling, which helps with cooling and with sloshing. And there's the magnetic drain plug. This pan also has ports for different things, like if you want to put a oil temperature sensor in it, which I might end up doing at some point. You have the option right from them. So let's get this hardware out and get it ready. Okay, if you have a deep pan, okay, if you have a deep pan already on your Allison, this is the deep filter that you need. Here's the PPE part number, which I think is really a GM part number, the 12805870. You can show it says for 1,000 and 2,000 series transmissions, the deep pan, the deep Allison pan and deep filter comes on the 2,000 and 3,000 series Allisons on the motorhomes and the medium duty trucks. These light duty trucks have always come. The 1,000s have already come, or always come with a shallow pan. So this is something that they would normally put on a heavy duty truck or medium duty truck. And here's the orange gasket that we have to pull out of the uh, the valve body before we put this in. And I think it's going to sit like this. So when they say integrated filter lock, this baffling material is going to hold the filter in. Alright, we're back under the truck here and you can see the old orange gasket I'm pulling out with this little hook tool. I want to be careful not to gouge anything. At least try not to. There we go. It was stuck up in there for sure. It had some girth to it. It wasn't just rubber. There's probably metal inside. And this should be okay. Alright. Let's go ahead and get the new filter in. The Allen head screws for this PPE deep pan are um, 6 millimeter Allen heads. go. I hear it pop in like that. And it should just kind of hang there until we get the until we get the filter up. All right. Here we go. Got the gasket on top and I've got one screw through to make sure that it stays lined up. Try and get this started. And again, it's a six millimeter, which I only have regular Allen wrenches for this, so I'm gonna have to go in order to torque it properly. I'll have to go to the store and get a, a six millimeter for my driver so I can torque it down.
Okay, now that we've got the pan on, we're going to do the last step here, which means we're going to have to torque everything with the 6 millimeter Allen. Here's the torque sequence, and then uh, 15 foot-pounds. So I got my little torque wrench out, which I think is inch-pounds, and I'm assuming it's 12 inch-pounds per foot-pound, so uh, 10 would be 150 plus 30, so it would be 180 inch-pounds of torque. But actually, I'm going to Google it first. Here's the torque sequence. Got my little inch pound wrench here set to 180. All right, so number one is going to be this one, and then two will be one back across the way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this one. I'm just going to cinch him down a little. Okay, it should be good. That's what it should look like, and this is what it looks like. Nice ribbing, nice embossing, much deeper than stock, four quarts extra capacity, and being aluminum, and having a magnetic drain plug and the ability to run temp sensors if you want. Really nice. Alright, let's refill it. Before we refill it, I want to make sure you guys can see this is level with the bottom of the truck, how much it sticks down. The stock one was right here at the T-bars. This one is just under the middle cross member. But it's no lower than the front skid plate, so I have to keep it in mind when I'm off road. But I, I pretty much think it's going to be—it's not going to be a problem. All right, let's put 11 quarts in it. There we go. Checking for any leaks.
can feel the fluid moving through the filter. A little bit of fluid right here, but that was there from when I put it on. That's not a leak. I should have checked this drain plug to make sure it was tight, although I'm sure it is. Uh, I'm going to check for uh, fluid level now. It has about 11 quarts, and it's cold.